G'day traders, Chris Wesson here, Head of Research at Pepperstone. Now, it's not gonna surprise anyone to say that the two major overriding dominant macro thematics that we've all been talking about, one is, is what's happening between trade tensions, uh, whether it's the US's relationship with Mexico, which obviously seems to have got on a, a sort of a, on a more positive note recently with the trade truce that's been taking place over the weekend and the slight repricing that's been taking place in the front end of the US curve. But also, you know, now it's sort of the big focus is on the relationship between uh, President Xi and Donald Trump. All eyes really focused on what is arguably going to be a massive event risk for markets, and that's the G20 meeting. The consideration is, is one, will we actually see a meeting between these two leaders? And if we don't, Donald Trump has already suggested that he will, as a result of not meeting uh, between Donald Trump and President Xi, actually put up uh, tariffs on this remaining $300 billion tranche of, of Chinese exports to the US. So whether that's a 10% tariff or whether that's a 25% tariff is something that we don't know at this stage. Uh, but certainly there's a lot of expectations that these two leaders will need to meet up or we will see a drawdown in financial markets. We will see a tightening of financial conditions kick in as a result of that situation. And if we do see a meeting between these two leaders, will we see any sign of convergence that give us some hope that a deal will take place uh, going forward? And again, that's something that is a key question for markets and that's something we need to explore. We wouldn't be surprised to see financial market volatility pick up a little bit going into that meeting. Uh, but certainly uh, we're keeping our eye firmly on what's happening in this dollar CNH cross. We've seen consideration, a consolidation playing through in price, a breakout of this consolidation that we've been seeing sort of 695 down to 690. Uh, takes us up to say the 2017 highs. And again, you know, that's something that we are keeping our eye firmly on as a proxy now of what's happening in this trade cycle. We've also got our eye firmly on what's happening in the rates pricing. We've seen very, very aggressive uh, rates pricing coming through. The market's expecting you know, very big stimulus coming through from these central banks. And that's obviously been something that, that has moved the, the S&P nicely higher. We've seen a, about a 5 6% rebound in the S&P since that 3rd of June. But now market pricing has got very rich in my opinion. Um, and whether or not the Federal Reserve actually come and meet the market and give us that expectation that they are going to go uh, somewhere closer towards the market, I think is, is good, will be addressed in the 20th of June FOMC meeting. So again, another date for your diary. I think this is definitely something that we could see implied volatility in things like dollar yen and dollar CNH kick up quite nicely. Um, if we have a look at what's expected for the June uh, meeting, now we're not expecting rate cuts to be, to be, um, to be displayed. Um, there's about a 17% chance of that happening at the moment. I think that even that's probably a little bit too high. The Fed have given us absolutely no indication that they're going to cut rates at this, uh, this meeting and policy guidance and forward guidance and their communication exercise around that has been one of their main policy tools. So, you know, they've had every opportunity to guide us to a rate cut. What we have heard is, is uh, from Governor Lowe and also from his sidekick Richard Clarida is that they are watching developments and they will act appropriately in that situation. Of course, they will be somewhat appeased by what we've seen between the US and Mexico, but obviously they're still keeping our eye firmly on what's happening between President Xi and Donald Trump and the relationship between those two big nations. Um, but if also they said they will act appropriately if necessary. Now, of course, that was what they said before the non-farm payrolls number. The non-farm payrolls number, of course, was very weak. 75,000 jobs being created was significantly below the 175,000 that was expected. We need around 150 on the uh, household survey to keep uh, unemployment unchanged. And of course, that's not happening at the moment. So that is something that we are a little bit concerned about. The average hourly earnings, as I say, 0.22%. The market was looking for 0.3%. So is this the start of some something of a, of a bit of a concerning trend? Has this trade tensions that's been, that's been impacting uh, potentially going to spill out into the labour market? And I think that's something that we do need to consider. And that could be the reason why we get this so-called insurance cuts from the Federal Reserve. So we're not expecting a rate cut in June. What we could see, which I think is very important, is the idea that we're going to see an early end to this quantitative tightening, this balance sheet normalisation programme. There seems absolutely no sense whatsoever that the Federal Reserve are going to start cutting rates while continuing to draw liquidity out of the market. So we do need to see an early termination to that balance sheet normalisation. That could be announced in June. We could also see a change to their forward guidance. Now recall uh, what we've been seeing is that they, hold, they have held, and we saw that in the minutes, this kind of patient stance for adjusting um, the Fed funds rate going forward. And they felt that they were you know, that, that they were fairly comfortable with that situation. Now, I think what we'll probably see is a change to that forward guidance to that they're closely monitoring 
economic and financial conditions going forward. And that would give them, you know, the scope effectively to cut rates even as early as July. So, you know, the market's pricing about a 78% chance that they cut rates in July. That was a little bit higher after the non-farm payrolls number. But of course, after the Mexico deal, you know, we've seen a little bit of those rate cut uh, expectations coming out of the market. But as it stands at the moment, and of course, a lot will be de determined on what happens in the retail sales numbers that comes out on Friday later this week, is the idea that we probably will see a July cut. But what we need to see, and what I think what is really important, is the idea that we are pricing in so much uh, in these curves going forward. You have a look at the swaps curves over 12 months and we've got 78 basis points of cuts being priced into the Fed in, from, from the Federal Reserve. That's three rate cuts. You know, that's not just around there. We can have a look in Australia, we're expecting 51 basis points of cuts, two rate cuts over 12 months. Uh, in New Zealand, 46 basis points of cuts. In Japan, they've even got 12 basis points of cuts. In Europe, seven basis points of cuts. And these are markets where they're probably more likely to increase quantitative easing or restart quantitative easing than cut the deposit rate there as well. Uh, we can have a look at that. And I think if we, with that in mind, the big question we've got to ask ourselves is, will the Federal Reserve at the 20th of June meeting open up the door for a rate cut cycle? Given what's priced into these curves, if we don't see them deliver that, if the market doesn't see this being sufficiently dovish enough to open the door for rate cuts, there will be uh, a big rally, I think, in, in the dollar. I think there'll be a, a big drawdown coming through in, in, in the equity markets, in, in the S&P specifically, in the NASDAQ. Uh, I think gold will probably um, you know, work uh, you know, fairly badly in that situation. I think you'll probably see a few sellers coming through and I think you'll probably see front end yields move significantly lower uh, or significantly higher, should I say. So I think that meeting is very, very important. Will the Federal Reserve address you know, the, the aggressive um, rate cuts that are being priced in and effectively move themselves closer to the market. If they don't, you know, that's when we're going to see big volatility kicking in. So we are watching the G20 meeting. We're watching this Fed meeting. And I think a lot of answers will come through for these questions that we hold.